Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder, and I'm here to help you rock your hormones and feel great in your body so that you can reclaim more energy, vitality, and joy and become the CEO of your health. Let's jump on in. Hey, one more thing. An estimated 90% of women are struggling with key nutrient deficiencies that leave our bodies lacking in the building blocks that they need to function at their very best. Now, when our bodies don't have the right building blocks, they will keep pushing forward until we finally feel totally burned out and drained. But here's the good news. There's an easy way to fuel our bodies with exactly what they need without spending hours in the kitchen. And that is with targeted supplementation. Now this week only, take advantage of my best sell of the year and save 15% on the entire Essentially Whole store, plus get a bonus holiday recipe guide. Simply go to drmarisa.com slash sale and start saving today. The link will be in the show notes and I can't wait for you get that energized body that you've been waiting for all year long. Almost a year ago on December 10th, my life changed forever in the best, most amazing, most challenging way. Our precious, ever so happy baby Kingston was born full of magic and wonder. So to celebrate his upcoming birthday milestone, we have been turning it up for the fall and holiday season. I am feeling so grateful, especially as we near the one year mark. And honestly, I have been feeling that gratitude all year long even through the many, many, many sleepless nights. Now, we have intentionally created some very sweet traditions for our little family, and we are gearing up for Kingston's holiday magic birthday party in just a few weeks. And did I mention that we are also moving into our new house at the same exact time? We're literally moving on December 5th and then hosting his epic birthday party on December 11th. Right now, my house is full of boxes and we are knee deep in the moving process. Now, definitely stay tuned on Instagram to see the holiday magic birthday party come alive. It is gonna be such a fun celebration. Now, in the midst of all this change and excitement, one thing remains constant. Our goal to stay healthy as a family throughout the entire holiday season. Alex and I are committed to keeping our little family healthy, especially, oh my goodness, you know how it goes, especially during the holidays. Because let's be honest, it's the hardest time of the year to maintain healthy habits. Alex and I have been working really hard to support our metabolism and create more metabolic flexibility to keep our blood sugar in optimal range. I know for many people, recovering from the holidays can seem impossible, especially starting in early January. And as we get older, it's harder to recover. And for some of us, the stubborn extra pounds stay on no matter what we do in the springtime of the next year. So today I wanna focus on holiday hacks that set you up for metabolic success. That way, there's less need to recover in the first place. I'm also gonna dive into some simple ways to overcome emotional and fatigue-driven cravings because, ooh, it is hard, right? As magical as the holidays are, they can also be draining and overwhelming, and so it's really easy to fall into those emotional eating habits when we are feeling emotionally and physically drained. I believe that the first step to rocking the holidays with ease and grace and staying as healthy as possible is to set an intention for what you want over the next 30 to 40 days because that is the duration of the rest of this holiday season. Now, when I sat down to create an intention for my big move, the holidays, Kingston's birthday, and my health, I grabbed my daily self-care journal and physically wrote it down. And I'm continuing to write my intention down every single day in the morning so that it stays top of mind. That is how serious I am about staying healthy this entire holiday season. It's actually one of the biggest reasons I created my daily self-care journal. I love the gentle, loving, positive personal accountability that inspires and makes you feel good. And that's how I created the five minute journal and it has been my best friend this entire year. Even on days when I'm exhausted with baby spit up in my oversized mama sweatshirt, I still make time to self care journal out every single day and create some loving self care and accountability. And check this out. The journal is currently on sale as a part of my Black Friday sale that's going on this week 
ending on Monday, November 29th. The same day, we're gonna be closing on our new house. Now I'm gonna have the link to go and check out the Self Care Journal or the entire Essentially Whole store where the Black Friday sale is going down with everything 15% off, some things even more than that. So let's jump into my top 10 hacks for eating and surviving the holidays. All right, let's start with how to help you survive the holidays when it comes to simple eating strategies. Number one, as I mentioned before, set yourself up for success. Recommending not to set a goal, but set an intention, right? And the goal really is, is just to maintain where you're at, to move your body every single day, or maybe eat a salad before dinner, or make sure you get some veggies in during the day, drinking enough water. Honestly, anything that feels good to you that will help you move closer to feeling great and maintaining where you're out throughout the holiday season is what I recommend. So that can be a lot of things. Whatever feels good in terms of keeping you healthy. For me, walking. Walking is my number one every day. Walking, drinking plenty of water, and making sure that I'm getting lots of fruits and veggies. That's the deal. Number two, plan time for moving your body. Speaking of walking, (laughs) remember we talked about on this show many, many times that walking after meals literally not only will help to relieve that holiday stress, lower blood sugar, but also boost metabolic health and prevent weight gain. So moderate daily exercise every single day can be super great as well. But honestly, just that walk for 10 to 20 minutes after a meal can be the game change. Also, I love my Peloton. I ain't gonna lie. Robin, Arizona, I see you, girl. I love working out in my home gym, you know, all those things. Because we are in the transition of moving, a lot of walking is gonna be going down for me. Now, this one I do all the time. This is number three. Before leaving for a party or a small event, eat a light snack like raw vegetables or some protein or almonds to curb your appetite. You will be less tempted to overindulge and it'll help stabilize your blood sugar levels. This has been a big one for me. That way I don't show up to the party starving and hangry and I end up eating way more than I ever intended to, right? Number four, once you arrive at that event, I recommend serving the party buffet or the platters of food, right, before filling up your plate. That way you're not unconsciously adding things to your plate. You're very conscious about what you're doing. So choose your favorite foods. Skip the things you don't love. Like don't just put stuff on your plate just because. But make sure to include lots of veggies, that fiber super important, protein to keep your plate balanced. Again, and, you know, if you're going to go back For more, make sure to go back for that salad, go back for those veggies, because those help to slow down your digestive system and help to feed your microbiome. That's gonna be huge for stabilizing blood sugar levels as well. Number five, be mindful about when you eat. So before you eat, take three to five deep belly breaths, say a short prayer if you enjoy giving thanks for your food, and then really savor each bite and set your fork down between bites. This is probably one of my favorite ways to not shove food in my face. Because I'm type A personality and I thrive on efficiency, I like to efficiently eat as well. Like I get in trouble for not sitting at the table. I'm always eating at the kitchen counter. (laughs) These are habits that I've been doing since I've been like a teenager or in my early 20s. And so one of the things I have learned to do is at least set my fork down as much as possible. Because if I don't, I will just slam that food. Now I'm great about servings. I'm just not great about the slowness of the digestive process. That is for sure. That's what I recommend is just being really mindful about that piece. Number six, be mindful about beverages. Ooh, this is a big one for so many people. The holiday is all about beverages. I mean, we went to a coffee shop yesterday on our way back home from the zoo. They had eggnog drinks. They had mocha peppermint drinks. They had cinnamon caramel, swirl mocha, all the things. (laughs) all the things sugar straight up and you think about all of the holiday coffee cocktails and just cocktails in general I mean that's what's really fun about the holidays is the amount of yummy holiday drinks but let's get creative here there's a lot of ways that we can decrease the amount of alcohol decrease the amount of sugar one of the things that I love to do is make non-alcoholic mocktails and basically my mocktail (laughs) 
<laughs> is some Pellegrino. I actually have a Pellegrino right in front of me right now with a squeeze of lime and some pomegranate seeds in the water to give it a little sparkle. I also love to add raspberries or sliced strawberries to my sparkling water just to give it again a little extra sparkle. There's a lot of different ways that you can create like sparkly water infusions to really, you know, just kind of make things look pretty and have a little sparkly treat without it like damaging your <laughs> metabolism and blood sugar and your brain. So just something to be thinking about when it comes to beverages. Uh, for me, I'm still breastfeeding. And I also know that calories, like just an example, I shared this on the show in an interview not too long ago about my experience with a espresso frappuccino. And I thought it was just literally an espresso almond milk frappuccino, but it wasn't. Um, although I had one of those too. <laughs> This one had like one pump of sugar in it. I don't exactly know what syrup it was, but it was something. And I had never seen my continuous glucose monitor jump and spike as fast as it did after that drink within like 30 minutes. And it took me, I think, 72 hours to recover from that small, that tall, small, call it whatever you want, frappuccino. It took days to recover from that to get my blood sugar back to stable. So just a heads up, you think about how often we can do that in man it adds up really quickly and it's no wonder we gain so much weight during the holiday season so drinks in particular because they hit the bloodstream so so fast we got to really mindful be mindful about our sugar intake and honestly sparkling water with lime pomegranate seeds one of the most festive flavorful ways to do that lemon's great too grapefruit's great citrus is really kind of give a little extra pop without all of the excess sugar. Number seven, take the focus off food. We are doing this big time at our house. We're doing a turkey trot on Thanksgiving in our new hometown. We're going to the aquarium tomorrow. We went to the zoo yesterday. We did a really beautiful walk on the beach today. And so we're just doing all these family activities that are walking friendly, easy, fun, experiential because we have passes to all this stuff too and so you know we just drive down there real quick and so that's what we love to do we do family hikes walks on the beach playful games group activities i think the holidays are really about the experience right amazing conversations being out and about so doing as much of that as possible i think is so so incredible decorating your homes maybe walking tour of decorated homes we're going to a charity event we're going to be you know we're wrapping up gifts for toys for tots and so this is a lot of little things that we're doing in the holiday spirit but that are not calorie focused. So just some things to be thinking about there. Number eight, this is my absolute favorite. I've been doing this for, oh my gosh, I wanna say 15 years now, maybe longer, is bring your own healthy dish to the holiday gathering. I'll tell you what, this will set you up for success. This year, I'm making one of my favorite soups. I love butternut squash soup with a little bit of paprika, some micro cilantro and pomegranate seeds on top. It is just so delicious. It's so creamy on its own. I use a little bit of, of coconut milk, but that's about it to really give it a creaminess. I'm making a huge fall salad with persimmons and pomegranates. You can see that per pomegranates are a big theme. <laughs> Um, Americona almonds, you know, all kinds of yummies. And so I love to bring these things to holiday parties. We actually just hosted Friendsgiving and it was all healthy items, everything, everything we made from the, the salad to the salmon to the roasted sweet potatoes, although those will light me up in terms of my blood sugar, but overall sweet potatoes are wonderful. What else did we do? Sparkling, sparkling waters. We just had, you know, it, it was just really nice. I just looked around and was looking at everything that we made. And I was like, oh my gosh, all this stuff is so, so healthy. Honestly, a lot of it could just be on my 14 day detox. And so I think, you know, the more that you can set yourself up for success by bringing something to a party or even house hosting people and you kind of, you know, tweaking the menu to be a more healthy holiday experience, I think is just always the way to go. And it just opens the door for people to really experience more of that healthy food. Number nine, speaking of practice healthy holiday cooking. So preparing a favorite dish, lower in fat and calories, not even so lower in fat, but lower in sugar 
will help promote healthy holiday eating. So there's some lots of ways to shift and trade out, you know, a lot of the different recipes. You know, we don't we don't even make like we may make mashed sweet potatoes or we'll, like I said, lots of salads, healthy fish. Like there's a lot of ways to make a lot of our dishes today a lot healthier. So you can make a lot of things dairy free, gluten free, all the things free. And there's recipes everywhere out there. So just something to be thinking about, you know, how can you, maybe it's just one recipe this year that you're like, you know what, I'd love to find a healthier sweet potato recipe, or I'd love to find a healthier mashed potato recipe, something like that. You know, maybe it's roasted potatoes instead of mashed potatoes. Something to think about. Number 10, support emotional eating by recognizing the triggers and setting yourself up for success. So 98% of all diets fail because they don't address the food addiction and how to overcome emotional eating. So why food? Why, why is it always food? So negative emotions can lead to a feeling of emptiness or emotional void. Food is believed to be a way to fill that void and create a false feeling of fullness or a temporary wholeness. So other factors include that kind of play a role in this is retreating from social support during times of emotional need, not engaging in activities that might otherwise relieve stress, sadness, or so on, right? So we're, we're kind of disengaging, not understanding the difference between physical and emotional hunger, using negative self-talking that's related to binging episodes. This can create a cycle of emotional eating and changing cortisol levels in response to stress leading to cravings, which we know, oh, that's happening to so many people right now. Holidays bring about stress, leads to the body thinking it needs to recover, rebound, replenish, and we get these cravings. What we know to be true is emotional eating affects all of us, men, women, children. It may be caused by a number of factors, including stress, hormone changes, or mixed hunger cues. When filling up may work in the moment, eating because of negative emotions often leaves people feeling more upset than before and more empty. The cycle typically doesn't end until a person addresses the emotional needs heads on, right? We got to get to the root cause of what's going on here. So I want to quickly share some strategies that can help address the emotional and stress root cause component of emotional eating. First one, probably one of my go-to favorites, I've been doing it consistently all year long, is meditation. And it doesn't have to be the full-fledged sit down with a mantra kind of meditation. It could just be some simple deep breaths um, and you can do them anywhere. Just sitting down in a quiet space, letting just your breath in and out of your nostrils. I would do a six count in, an eight count out. When we do an eight count out, we reset those sympathetic nervous system to move into more parasympathetic. So I always just go and then breathe out. And instantly I feel more relaxed, more calm, less stressed. Other ways to cope with stress is really, you know, kind of one of the biggest things I recommend besides meditating is writing in your journal, reading a book or even finding a few minutes to otherwise relax or decompress from the day. Just what is the thing that helps you decompress? Is it walking? Is it journaling? Is it gratitude? Is it texting a bestie or leaving a voice memo with a bestie? Like what is it that helps you to kind of process a lot of that emotional stuff that's coming up? Next is, I think, moving your body is one of the best ways that you can do that. For me, yoga, working out, the Peloton, walking, any of those things. I know I typically hit a wall between 2 and 4 p.m., especially right now with just this last year of raising this amazing, sweet baby. But yeah, my energy levels have literally gone into the crapper. I'm not going to pretend like they haven't. And so two and four is usually that like the witching hour for me where I will definitely, if I'm not more proactive, I will reach for something to kind of give me that energy boost. And so I've been walking outside for 15 to 20 minutes and it's amazing how much it resets everything for me my mental fatigue comes on and I just need something different to kind of shift things out opposed to trying to grab a couple huge gems or (laughs) make an iced coffee for the day, something like that. Okay, next is if you can keep your body fueled up with rich foods like fats, proteins, and plants, fiber, then we oftentimes can really keep those emotional hunger pains away, something to be thinking about as well. And then also taking out, I would say this is probably the biggest one for me is removing the common offenders out of your kitchen. So if indeed I'm at a place in my life where I'm feeling a little bit less emotional resilient, I feel more stressed, like right now, 
in this move and everything else that's going on, it's definitely, it can be so easy to get caught up in all of it and to want to like eat your way out of it. And so for us, we just don't keep the stuff in the kitchen, even for the holidays, because I feel like willpower doesn't work. I am very disciplined. I'm very focused. And I know that willpower doesn't work for me. I mean, it works until a certain point and then eventually I cave because I'm exhausted or I'm having a moment or I'm feeling triggered due to some past trauma that I, I'm i still having to heal from, whatever it may be. So if I can keep the stuff out of my house, I'm more apt to make a better decision like grabbing a sparkling water or taking a walk outside or making a tea for myself. Any of those things are really self-soothing and they're great options but not if there's some chocolate in the house. I'm going to do that first. <laughs> so just something to think about um, when it comes to helping to support yourself, you know, work through some of those emotional and stressful moments. Because let's be honest, it's going to happen. This holiday season, you're going to feel that at one point or another. It's going to feel overwhelming. Someone's going to put some stuff on your plate that was never supposed to be on your plate to begin with. And all of a sudden, you're just going to have a lot more to deal with. It always happens. Like the stuff doesn't stop piling. It never does. People put their agenda on your plate all the time. People put a lot of agenda on my plate today. And I was like, oh, uh, uh-uh. uh. So I feel that 100%. And that's why I don't keep that stuff in the house. <laughs> so I want to end this episode Speaking of stress, speaking of people putting stuff on your plate, I know that you're probably feeling a little drained by some holiday challenges and obligations. You know, this episode is going live literally right after Thanksgiving. You're probably still where you're at for the holidays right now on this Friday because it's it's yesterday was Thanksgiving. (laughs) So I want to speak to as much as this season is incredible. I know I'm already having really a lot of fun. We can feel triggered by conversations. We definitely in a very volatile time. The pandemic is still going down. People still don't feel comfortable traveling. Maybe you've got family members who are or are not taking precautions. You know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of just charged up energy, you know, however you want to slice it. And so, and then the to-do lists and all of that stuff. The struggle is real right now for many of us with so much uncertainty and concern for our family and friends. So showing up for other people can be draining if we're not honoring ourselves in the process. So please give yourself permission to be gentle with yourself during this time. I need to hear that message myself. I'm feeling it already. I am the common denominator of my family. I'm talking about not just my little nuclear family, but my entire family. Now that I'm a mama to the only grandchild and great grandchild, I'm my mom's side of the family, I am feeling that. And so we've had to set some major boundaries and and really get clear about what matters most to us. So make sure you're carving out time for yourself. And if you find yourself feeling triggered by a conversation or a painful memory, definitely it's it's time to, to love up on you. So here are my daily stress-free hacks that I hope will help usher you through these holidays with this, a lot of ease and grace. Number one, I'm a big fan of this. I love hiking. So you can hike up your mood with a yummy little hike or a walk with some sunlight or just step outside and enjoy the fresh air and vitamin D. Now, if that means you need to bundle up, do it. It's worth it for all that sunshine and just taking that little, even a five minute walk can just shift everything in you. Number two, take a whiff of citrus, like grapefruit, wild orange, tangerine essential oil, and do a quick little breathing exercise for 15 to 30 seconds. It's amazing how quickly citrus can change your mood from grouchy pants to feeling like everything is all right in the world. Number three, walk away your worries. Again, this has been my go-to remedy for everything and anything. 30-minute walk several times a week can change everything, especially if you're listening to a really great podcast like this podcast right here, or you are listening to Alicia Keys, or you're listening to some Stevie Wonder, maybe you're listening to some Aretha. Those are all my favorites. And just kind of give yourself an opportunity to, to like, you know, feel that energy, feel that music energy. And so you could also dance it off. You could do like a three minute. We have been doing so many dance parties. Just yesterday, we did a, a Whitney Houston dance party. We were dancing to I Want to Dance with Somebody. Next, one of my favorites is do less and enjoy more. So take moments out in your day to really enjoy and savor because why not? The holidays aren't supposed to be for suffering. The holidays are supposed to be for you loving and enjoying it. 
Next is stick with as much of your routine as possible. Do not let the holidays knock you off your typical schedule unless you really want it to, but keep those healthy habits in place and keep that self-care in place. It is non-negotiable. Even if, especially if your in-laws are coming over, don't neglect whatever cracks you up. Laughter is the best medicine. If you need some laughter, oh my gosh, I will post some baby giggle videos on Instagram because Kingston, he lights up an entire room when he's got those baby giggles going on. We were at the beach today. He turned all the heads with his amazing cackly baby giggles. Just thinking about him right now just fills my heart with so much joy. Number seven, just let go of perfection. Stop obsessing, having to do everything for everybody, being perfect for everyone. Perfection is boring and it takes away from the enjoyment of this whole experience. Get out of the house, go out to dinner somewhere, go see a movie, get together with family out of the house, outdoors preferably, go to a park, go to the beach, maybe go ice skating, whatever it is that you love. Go tech-free with a digital detox for the morning or evening, especially when you're enjoying family time. Um, Number 10, turn up your favorite song and dance. I know I already mentioned this one, but it is worth mentioning more than once. Get your dance party on. We are obsessed with John John Legend's holiday album. (laughs) It is almost time for John. It is time for John Legend's holiday album. (laughs) So we're about to bust that out and get our dance party on on that as well. And then a bonus I know this one's hard. I know hearing that, like me hearing it from myself, I just got to be ready to receive this. Don't over schedule. It is so easy to fall into this trap of finding yourself running from one thing to another. This creates a lot of perceived stress. Let's be honest, anxiety. Oh my gosh, there's nothing that will launch anxiety than an over scheduled situation. <laughs> so there you have it. My top recommendations for surviving the holidays. Now, if you want to go and grab that self-care journal, which I highly recommend, if you don't have a journal that you are writing some stuff down and setting an intention and like having gentle, loving accountability for your own, for protecting your energy, you got to go get this journal. So it is on sale right now during my Black Friday sale, along with all the supplements. Everything is 15% or more off store-wide and you get my holiday guide, which is incredible and I believe it's free shipping over like $40 or $47, I forget, but definitely worth going and checking it out. Um, you go to drmarisa.com slash shop. And remember, the sale is going to end on Monday. So get to get to getting some of your goodies, the supplements in particular. You definitely want to set yourself up for success there. And thank you so much for listening in today on the Essentially You podcast. This show, as always, is about providing tools to rock your hormones, to boost your energy, and help you feel amazing in your body. There's someone in your life that needs to hear this particular episode today, which I have a feeling that they are probably literally in your house right now or you're visiting them. Take a moment, text them, screenshot them, do what you got to do, or share it on social media as well. Hashtag hormone literacy or hormone CEO. And coming up next... Coming up, super, super stoked about this. I have Dr. Eleanor Cleghorn. We're talking about how doctors convince women that their symptoms aren't real. I know we just literally just did an episode on this, but we're going to dive deeper and how we continue to misdiagnose women. So I'm really excited for this episode because we dive deep into the history of what is going on with us as women in the healthcare system. I think it's important for us to know we can make changes moving forward. All right, have a wonderful rest of your holiday weekend. See you soon.